Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're gonna to look at Google Forms. We're gonna look at how you can use Google Forms to create a test or a quiz that your students can do where they'll get immediate feedback and they'll know their result without you having to do anything, which is good news. And also you will be able to look and see which students did the test and what marks they got and also perhaps where they had any problems or where they had any difficulties. You can use Google Forms in this way because there's a special button called Set as Quiz and that allows Google Forms to actually work as a quiz making tool. We're gonna to base this around language teaching but of course it could be used for any topic and I'm gonna basically create a test and then I'm gonna do it as a student so that you can see what feedback the student gets and then afterwards we'll go back to teacher mode and look at actually the information that the teacher gets as well. So a very comprehensive set of videos. Let's get started. As always, please, if you like the video, like it. Please comment and ask me any questions and perhaps more importantly than anything else, please remember to share my videos with other teachers as well and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. So let's actually create a Google form. You need to be logged into Google, it's free. Uh, you then simply go over to your apps and click down and the one you're looking for is your Google Drive. Now Google Forms is part of your Google Drive and you can create as many Google Forms as you want. Uh, the secret, as I've said, is to click on the Create button uh, to turn it from a, for a survey questionnaire into an actual quiz. So click on the New button to get your form, come down to More, and what you'll need to choose when you come to More is to choose Google Forms. Now, when you choose Google Forms, you do actually have two options. You can either choose from a template or just a simple blank one. I always choose Blank Form. So that's gonna get you your Google form. Now, there's two really important things we need to do. First of all, give a title to the actual questionnaire or to the quiz or the test. Also give a title or a name to the file itself so that you can easily find it again if you need to use it. And then the special setting that I'm gonna show you, which is how to turn it into a quiz. So I'm gonna name this test, test, let's delete that right, test one, TTV and then what you can do if you click here it will grab the title of your test and use that as the actual title of the file now what you can do though is delete the gaps just to make it better in terms of the name uh, that's the actual file if you needed to look for it again it's called test one TTV so we've done that one final thing we need to do is to click over here onto the settings and come to quizzes and the important button is this one here, make this a quiz. Okay, now obviously one really important thing when you do that is that you're gonna need therefore to tell Google what the right answers and the wrong answers are to the questions that you produce, as well as provide feedback to your students. So keep that in mind as soon as you click on this button, the way that you actually create the form will, will change slightly. Let's start now, let's actually create some questions. Now what I'm gonna do for this example is I'm gonna kind of put in some text that the students would have to read and then I'm gonna add the questions after. And you can do that really easy. So this would almost like become like a sort of reading comprehension. Now I'll grab some text from somewhere easy just to use just as an example. Of course the text can, can be anything. And where you add the text is in at this bit at the top where it's the description. So what I'm gonna quickly do is jump over to my website and I'm simply going to just grab some text from here just to save myself time rather than actually writing out a whole story. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of text and I'm just going to use this as an, an example. Obviously the text could be anything. So I'm going to click on the description and just paste that in. So that's the text at the top of the screen that the students are going to read. And then I'm going to begin to answer the questions underneath. Remember when you do a quiz, and you've set it to quiz type, you need to create both the question and the feedback. So I'm gonna just do a really quick example, right? So let's imagine that the students have to read this text and then I'm gonna ask a simple question here. I'm gonna say, what does Russell do? Sorry the questions are about me, but it's just from a legal point of view, much easier if I just simply create and use one of my own texts for this example, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put he, is an artist, which he definitely isn't. I'm gonna put, uh, he is an engineer, which he also definitely isn't. 
and then I'm going to put as a third option, which is the correct one. He is an educational technologist. Now, I've given the three options. That's fine. And the important thing now is that I need to click here and put the answers in. And there are two things I need to do. So if I click on that, the first thing I need to do is tell Google, well, what is the correct answer? And I'm going to say, well, the correct answer is number three. And if you get that correct, I'm going to get, let you get five points. OK, but also I need to add the um, feedback and I do that here add answer feedback so I'm going to click on that and you've got two options what do you do when the incorrect answer the answer is incorrect and what do you do if the answer is correct so for the incorrect answer I'm going to simply put incorrect he is an educational technologist so I've put the first answer in now I'm going to do the correct answer and for this one I'm just going to put well done uh, he works independently as an educational technologist now obviously this could be any kind of text that you're asking questions about any text that you paste in there at the top doesn't even have to be for language learning it could be for another area you could be perhaps working in history or geography or something click on save your first question's done the question is a very simple question and you've got three possible answers and now you would add another question and to do that you simply come down here underneath and add a second question now for the sake of this example I'm just going to do two questions you need to experiment with the different question types I'm keeping this really simple to multiple choice uh, I'm going to put in a second question now and the second question that I'm going to ask is um, where did he previously work so second question is where did he previously work the options that I'm going to write in so I'm going to write in three options and we'll put the first one we'll put our Oxford University well unfortunately I definitely didn't work there Oxford University uh, second one I'm going to put will be uh, let's put in Crawley College okay I'm just remembering that I was recently there so and then the third one I'm going to write in is University of Westminster and Warwick okay and that is the correct answer so again you always need to uh, once you put your question in add your answer key so you click here for your answer key and uh, tell the correct answer which in this particular case is the third one here and remember underneath to click on edit question uh, sorry no to click on add answer feedback and again I'm going to put in answers feedback for the correct answer and feedback for the incorrect answer so there it is I've put in the feedback for the uh, incorrect answer and then just going to change this over to the correct answer and I'm just going to put well done just to save time we've now done two questions click on save remember to put the number of points so I'm going to put five points here as a question right we've done two questions now imagine that we're the teacher and we want our students to do this test how can I get them to do the actual test I'm going to show you a couple of ways now one thing you can always do if you just come up to the top here if at any time you create a quiz and you just want to quickly preview it and just make sure you're happy with it you can click on this button here and it's going to give you a quick preview of how your quiz is going to look so in this particular quiz we've got some text that we have to read and then we've got two questions here so we're going to just put the what does Russell do and I'm going to put this one and where did he previously work and I'm going to put that so I'm going to get both answers correct and then I would submit the questions and then I can actually view my score so let me just have a quick look here and then uh, it tells me that I got the first question right and it also gives me the feedback underneath and then it gives me the second question now one thing at the moment this question or this um, particular quiz is uh, anonymous uh, I've not asked for anyone's name so one tip and I'm going to add it in now is that the, be, before they start the quiz for the students to actually give their names let me just quickly add that into the test now if we actually come back to the test uh, we can actually see now that one person's done the test uh, so even when you do a preview it will keep a record of uh, what you've done um, now one problem we've said is that there isn't really a question at the beginning to identify the person so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this top question okay and uh, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the description and then I'm going to click on a plus button underneath the description 
so that we're going to add a new question but I'm going to change this and just change that one to the short answer and I'm simply going to ask the question what is your name now in this particular case there's no need to put um, in fact I could put here what is your name and surname just to make it dead clear that you want both okay there's no need to provide an answer in this particular case because you're simply asking for the question one little tip here might be to put that to required now got a uh, test that's got a question for the person's name at the beginning and then afterwards we've got the two questions that we've created now it's time to actually share this with the students and let's see how you do that so to share a test what you need to do is click on the send button here and the choice that you're going to make you've kind of got different choices okay but let's let's imagine that you did know the email addresses of your students you could simply write in their email addresses and then send it to them and then they will receive a copy and um, you will be able to uh, they will be able to do the quiz in most cases what you're going to want to do is share a link now how you share that link is going to depend on you it could be that you share it through Edmodel or you share it through Moodle or perhaps you've got a website and you put the link onto a website you're going to have to think about how you share the link to the test generally I'm working with Edmodel when I'm doing my teaching so if I want to share a link to my students I simply give them a link via Edmodel you can make that link a little bit shorter as well by clicking here and it will kind of shorten it for you um, but it's still too long often just to simply write on the board and get the students to access so sharing the actual test is a bit of a problem and you will need to think about how you do that all you need to do then is simply copy that link and send it to your students now students don't need an, uh, a Google account to actually do this test, they just need access to the link and I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to copy that link and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in on another browser and imagine that I'm the student. So if I click on this browser here where I'm not logged into Google uh, and I'm simply going to press the paste button and paste that link in. So let's just click on here and click on paste and then click on enter so we now are accessing the test as a student and obviously I can see the test on the screen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my name here so I'm going to put Russell Stannard so I'm the first student to do this test and then I've got two questions I'll get one wrong one right so let's put that one for that one and one for that there obviously this is a very short test in, in reality you're going to want a longer test and of course this text here could be anything that you've written uh, and then underneath you're going to submit it and immediately you can see your score as a student and if I look now I can see okay I got one wrong and one right I can see where the answer was wrong and I get this feedback at the end uh, which tells me that the correct answer was he's an educational technologist and um, again second one I can see that I got the correct answer so you can see how easy it is to set up a quiz and then get the students to do the quiz now the final thing that I want to look at is let's look what the teacher sees because this is really interesting now the great thing from the teacher's point of view is that obviously the teacher didn't have to do anything, just made the test. You can use the test time and time again. You can even make copies of the test. But if I come back here, I can see now that two people have done my test. Remember, I tested it first. So, so I can click here and I can see the responses. And what I can actually do is, I've got various ways I can look at a summary overall of what uh, people did and which questions they got wrong or right. But perhaps more in, interestingly here is that I can look at individual examples. Now, um, the first example, I can see that this student didn't fill in their name because if you remember, I didn't create the, the name for the first student. I only uh, did it after I'd done that initial test. But I can see what the first student filled in. But if we go to the second student now, then clearly we can see the name of the student. We can see that they got the first question wrong and that we can see that they got the second question correct. And this is the way that the information would be conveyed to you. And you'd be able to click through and see every single student individually and see exactly what their score uh, is. Hopefully that's useful. I know I only did two questions. If you're going to do a test, you're probably going to have at least eight, ten questions. Brilliant for formative feedback. Perhaps asking some questions uh, 
at the end of the unit of a course book or in this case here I was doing it for reading comprehension it could have been a video at the top of the screen there you could have used a picture you could use all sorts of things uh, but what you, you can see the power of it in terms of the fact that it gives immediate feedback to the students so there's no need for the teacher to intervene but you get all of this lovely data that helps you to see well what students did the test and what scores did they get remember it's always a really good idea to ask the first question what is your name I really hope you like that video. It's something I really like, Google Forms, especially using it for formative testing because it's so easy to do. Uh, please share the video. Please like the video. Really help me to build my YouTube channel. We're slowly getting there. I think we're up to around, nearly around 8,000 followers now. Uh, please, any comments or questions, I'll do my best to get back to you. And don't forget, if you can, to subscribe to my channel click on the bell that way you are updated with all the latest videos and thank you very much if you're looking for any more free material please come to teachertrainingvideos.com lots of free material available here you've got all these different topics at the top of the screen just click on the topic you're interested in lots of videos then to choose from just click on the video and watch it if you want to keep up with all the latest work that I'm doing, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. Uh, in that newsletter, I will let you know of any new articles or blog posts that I've written, any webinars I'm running, any short courses I'm running, any conferences or workshops that I'm giving around the world, and also tell you about any new videos that I've produced. So that's a really good way of keeping up with the latest material. If you're looking to access all the backdated stuff, then the best thing to do is to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get access to all the backdated material, loads and loads of videos, different topics. Don't forget to click on the bell when you subscribe because that way you'll be told when new content has been added into the YouTube channel. Finally, as I said, I do do lots of training around the world and some online as well so if you do want me to perhaps do some training for your organization or uh, that could be either face to face or online then please contact me and you can do that here simply by clicking here and sending me an email and thank you very much if you're looking to do some further study on the topic of google forms then here's some other videos to related content that you might find useful